So why did I choose to become a lawyer in the first place? Do I then see myself making partner? How many hours a week do I work? And isn't life as a big corporate lawyer just insanely stressful? Hi, I'm Liam, a 27-year-old corporate lawyer working and living in London. And in this video, I'm going to be answering all of your big law questions. So this video is going to be split up into four sections with timestamps down below so you can skip to the parts you're interested in. First section is why I chose to become a corporate lawyer. I'll then move on to what life as a corporate lawyer is really like, particularly now I'm a fully qualified solicitor. Third, I'll talk about how you can decide if law is a good career for you. And fourth, I'll give advice to prospective and current lawyers that I've gleaned from my last two and a half years in the profession. So first question, what made you choose the legal field? So as a student, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do as a genuine career that I committed to for the long term, I think I had three main considerations in mind. The first were my interests. So just like what in general I'm interested in, I really have always found companies and the way the world of business works fascinating. So I think for me, the careers I was really looking at were those traditional, more corporate roles like consulting, law, banking, basically all of the role types that would give me an insight into what companies do and how they operate. So when I was deciding between those different roles, honestly, I think consulting, I didn't really know what it was. And I also definitely felt like I should try to get some kind of clear qualification, like I'd study languages at university. And I think I was mindful of the fact that going into a profession, I would really benefit from having a very concrete skill to bring. With law, you know the law, you know something that that lots of other people don't. And so that's sort of like a piece of your skill set that really is invaluable and can then be supplemented or used in different roles potentially. And then second, really focused on what is my skill set. I wrote down all of the things I felt I was really good at. So writing was one of them. I developed that skill over the course of studying languages at universities, writing essays all the time and having to be clear. I think second, I was pretty confident that in explaining complicated concepts in a way that was easy to understand and distilling things was something I was really good at. And third, I considered the financial reward, money basically. How much was I going to make in my first, second, third, fourth, fifth year? And what was the overall career trajectory like? Clearly, I don't think you should sacrifice your interests or your own skill set, what you're really good at for money. But I do think once you've decided, okay, I'm within this ballpark, money is a key factor. I've always been really interested in teaching, for example, always love like sharing knowledge and explaining things to people. And I did really strongly consider becoming a teacher, but a two of my four, my parents are divorced, I have four parents, two of my four parents are teachers. So that kind of went against that because I saw the nitty gritty bad bits of being a teacher and also fundamentally just the pay isn't that good for the amount of work you put in. I decided that law was the perfect mix of interest in business, skill set around writing, clearly explaining complex problems and good financial reward. Okay, moving on. Next question is, will you be a corporate lawyer for the long term? What's your goal with your corporate career? And do you basically aim to make partner? So this is such a difficult question in the sense that Look, I really do like most of the elements of my job. Right now, as a young professional couple, Beth is often away working. She works extremely hard as well. We also have side businesses, which we love running at weekends and evenings when I get home at a reasonable time. Right now, our life supports all of these things in a way that is sustainable. We can enjoy our lives, see friends, have a good, happy relationship all while working really hard in our careers, doing well in those, and also doing all the other stuff we're interested in. But I'm also not naive to the fact that obviously we plan at some point, hopefully to have a family. We're getting married next year. We are only 26 and 27. So I think we've probably got three, four, five years until we want to start thinking about family, etc. But clearly, like if you have a family, it radically alters your ability to spend time doing things other than spending time with your family outside of your job. And and even then, like having a job that is as demanding as being a corporate lawyer, where you're at the office for 50 or 60 hours a week, often get interrupted at weekends or in holidays, that does have an impact on your family life. So 
I think for now, yes, I plan on staying in this career. I enjoy it. It pays extremely well. There are very good benefits and I fundamentally like the work I do and the people I work with. I work with incredibly smart people all the time, but there are downsides. It does consume a significant portion of your time and it does put stress on you in a way that right now I'm comfortable with, but I honestly don't know if I will be comfortable with that until I've lived it and I'm thinking about having kids or um, actually have kids it's kind of hard to say at that point I will feel a certain way when I have no idea how I'll feel so I think at this point I'm enjoying what I'm doing I'm learning as much as I can I'm getting as involved as I can in different types of work putting myself in a good position where either I'll think yep I want to stay in this long term or maybe you know I want to take a step back towards working in law still but actually at a slightly slower paced firm because I value other things that could come down the line. I honestly don't know. But right now, I'm just focused on enjoying my day-to-day -day work as much as possible. Maybe you think that's a cop-out. I honestly don't think that it's wise in a career to plan for more than two years. So if the question is, in two years, do you think you'll still be a corporate lawyer working where you are? My answer would be right now, I think probably yes. But in two years, I may well have changed that answer because my circumstances might have changed. Now, before I go through what life as a lawyer is really like, I want to quickly tell you about a tool that has really helped me manage my mental health through some of the tougher times I've experienced as a student and lawyer, and that's speaking to a therapist using BetterHelp, today's sponsor. I've spoken in the past pretty openly about how I really struggled in my second year of university, putting tons of pressure on myself to study all the time, comparing myself to others, and making myself so anxious that I developed IBS. At that time, speaking to a therapist massively helped me and now I've begun regular therapy using BetterHelp as a preventative tool to look after my mental health. Talking to a therapist when I feel like I want to, about any anxieties I have, or ways that I can reduce stress. BetterHelp's onboarding assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist. They have a very broad range of expertise within their therapist network with over 20,000 therapists currently on the platform. You can use the time with your therapist as suits you, scheduling weekly, bi-weekly or monthly sessions as you want and you can message your therapist at any time. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and so much more convenient. So yeah, you can visit betterhelp.com forward slash Liam Porritt. That's better, H-E-L-P forward slash Liam Porritt through the link at the top of the description to join over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Plus, you'll get 10% off your first month. Okay, let's now move on to what life is really like as a corporate lawyer. And the first question, of course, is how many hours do you work in a week? So I think what's probably interesting here is like to compare how many hours I worked a week as a trainee versus now that I am an associate. And it has definitely gone up. It's worth saying, right now the markets in M&A are fairly quiet and so my team has been much quieter than it's been for probably the last five, six, seven years. But I've been on a couple of different matters that have had quite a lot to do. That's meant that during the six months that I've been an associate, I probably worked on around three, maybe four weekends. So really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. And we're talking like a few hours at one of those weekends and maybe a whole day on the other two weekends. But the life of of a corporate and particularly M&A lawyer is so up and down. That means that one week I could bill 60 hours, maybe even more, which means actually concretely around 70, maybe 80 hours in the office or working from home at my desk because we only bill when we're actually working. And other weeks I might have only billed 10 hours, done a bunch of training, had lots of chats and stuff with people at work and had a much more chilled life. But maybe being in the office or working from home, if I'm working from home, 30, five hours ish a week. I would also say that I work at a UK law firm. Now US law firms generally do pay a bit more than UK based law firms but they also expect you to work more hours each week. So Cliff Notes answer somewhere between 35 and 70 hours a week, generally probably averaging around 50 hours a week at the office or at my desk at home. Alrighty next question, what is your worst experience as a corporate lawyer? This one, I've just spent like a good few minutes thinking about this and I really struggled to come up with an answer. Honestly, maybe I've been lucky. In two and a half years, I struggled to think of like a truly awful experience that I've personally had. Look, 
there is an adrenaline and a rush to doing a signing or a closing in M&A. So we work incredibly hard for an intense period and it's exhausting, but also very rewarding when you get to the end of it. That's partly what M&A or corporate lawyers live for, but also at the same time what they dislike. I think the worst one I probably had was when I was a trainee. There was just in a very intense period of maybe a month where signing was prolonged and postponed and we kept pushing really really hard towards that deadline and then it would get moved another week back and another week back and that went on for maybe just over a month that process is extremely exhausting because it's one thing working insanely hard for a week and then knowing that your weekends are going to be destroyed maybe for two or three weekends fine. But when, you know, that continues for a lengthy period, it doesn't matter how much time you get given off afterwards, which I used to recover and I was given time off for having worked so hard. But at the time, you're just exhausted. You have to give up social plans. It's not that you don't like the work. It's just really exhausting and dominates your entire life. So I think that would probably be my worst experience. It's just the intense periods when they really go on for a little bit too long or far too long and you just struggle to get through that. But I would say outside of that, I honestly haven't had a huge number of terrible experiences. I've made some mistakes. I've got criticism, which I personally as a massive perfectionist really struggle to deal with. And I beat myself up over and get slightly obsessed by that small piece of criticism and think that person is then judging me and doesn't think I'm good. And I really struggle with my own idea of how good I am. If I think someone else even slightly suspects that I've done something wrong, or has a slight comment on how I could have done something better. That's something I'm really working on to get better at accepting constructive feedback and, and accepting that criticism is a part of life. But I am able to at least some extent to rationalize that and say, Liam, come on now, like you're being silly. So that definitely does suck sometimes when I get criticism and I struggle to deal with it. But definitely I think worst experience is probably those really intense periods where your job just effectively becomes your life and you kind of struggle to do anything outside of that for a prolonged period. We then have another big question. How do you manage the stress, anxiety of work? Like I've made a ton of videos about the techniques I use. For me, I think it's a question of number one, making the most of quieter times when I'm not insanely busy, making sure I stick to a healthy routine, make sure I see friends, make sure that at weekends I have plans and enjoy my life. And then knowing that when it is a busy period, I may have to sacrifice some of that. It makes it not necessarily good when when it happens but more bearable when I have to give up plans because I'm insanely busy if I've made the most of the quieter times. In terms of when we are in a busy period I think as much as possible trying to prioritize those fundamentals of life. I think people can get sucked into sacrificing their own health so particularly sleep where they're in an environment where lots of people aren't sleeping as much as humans should sleep like not getting anywhere near seven hours a night. I really try to take a step back from that and prioritize myself as much as possible. So I will, if there is an opportunity to get an early night one night because someone else is covering and I'll say, look, I know you're doing this tonight. I'll do the late one tomorrow, but I'm exhausted. I'm being honest and open about this. I need to get seven or eight hours sleep so that I'm able to continue doing this for the long term because it's only if you've had enough sleep, if you've eaten something that you'll actually be able to do a decent job. Then when I know it is going to be really busy, I think just being prepared for that busyness. So food is a key thing that we need to survive. Making sure that I've got healthy meals pre-cooked, for example, at a quieter weekend and in the freezer. Making sure that Beth knows that I'm going to be really busy and maybe she'll have to do some more of the cooking for me. Just like when she's busier, I'll do more for her. Using tools like something like Huel, you know, I use you this morning because I'm really busy and need to leave after I film this video. It's a tool I can use to get lots of nutrients, make sure I've got enough calories and I'm being healthy, but also not spending time cooking. On top of sleep and food, I'd say the third pillar for me is then some form of exercise. So when I'm not insanely busy, I really have got into a routine of going to the gym in the morning before I start work. It just means that I've done it for the day. I know that then for the rest of the day, I'm going to feel more energized, just better about myself, more positive, about my body and how I'm feeling. And finally, I talk to a therapist through BetterHelp about any issues I'm having, how my mental health is at the moment, whether I'm feeling up, down, just getting out my feelings and emotions and also getting practical techniques that I can implement to improve my overall mental health and reduce stress and anxiety. 
So how can you work out if law is the right profession for you to go into? I think the first question here that I want to answer is things that I wish I'd known before starting life as a lawyer. So two things I'd say on this. The first is pretty universal across all professional services. I think I probably wish I'd had a greater appreciation of the fact that you are beholden to your client's demands. So yes, absolutely. Like if they ask for something and it can't be done in that time, partners will push back and say, actually, we don't think that's reasonable. But generally, if your client wants something on a Saturday, the partner will have to pick that up and say, okay, we need to put a team together and work on this on Sunday. It's super urgent and the client needs us. You don't necessarily have amazing visibility on when those client demands will come and you will have to prioritize them over most other things in life. And the second thing I think is just generally a myth that I want to dispel, which I think is that as you get more senior, you become this Harvey Specter figure who goes in all guns blazing, gets stuff done, and then goes off to the Bahamas for four weeks. The reality is that in pretty much every professional services firm I've ever had anything to do with, including law firms, the more senior you get, the more responsibility you get. And frankly, the more demands are put on you to manage relationships, make sure you are accessible if you're needed because you are the most knowledgeable person in the organization. As you get more senior, you do absolutely get more flexibility and ability to manage your own time, but it absolutely is not the case that you just sit off to the sidelines only being called upon when absolutely necessary and make tons of money and basically do little. Just not true. <laughs> We've then got, my daughter wants to become a corporate lawyer, should I encourage her? And what advice would you give to a 16 year old interested in becoming a corporate lawyer? So the first thing I would say is there are so many resources available online. Get them to watch every one of my day in the life videos where I talk about what I really do in a day as a trainee lawyer. Have a look at all of the virtual internships that are available online, both across law, banking, consulting, and other professions. If you type into Google virtual internships, internship, corporate law, loads will come up and you can do 20 hour courses giving you an amazing insight into the kind of work that we do at a law firm. I would then advise that you study law at university if you are interested in the academic discipline of law. Beth, for example, studied law because she found it fascinating and loved studying it. She just didn't want to be a lawyer ultimately. But if you don't think you're going to love studying law as an academic discipline at university, but you still like to become a lawyer potentially, then then study something else that you think you'll do well in and you'll enjoy. During your time at university, there are then tons of careers fairs. You can speak to people from graduate recruitment. You can speak to real lawyers at career events. You can speak to people from a range of other careers, which you absolutely should do, even if you are convinced you want to be a corporate lawyer. Last thing I would say is that there are a growing number of opportunities for solicitor apprentices, meaning that you don't even have to go to university to become a lawyer. I know quite a few people who have done this and have had an amazing experience earning money not building any student debt and becoming a solicitor in the process the big downside of this i think is it gives you slightly less time which university does give you to decide what you want to do with your life Okay, and last section is advice for people looking to get into or starting their career in law and the first question is how difficult is it to get into a top law firm. So there are a very significant number of exceptional law firms in the UK. We have an incredibly strong legal market. And if you look around the world, there are hundreds of international firms and thousands of local firms. But there are also quite a lot of people trying to become lawyers, which means that it is frankly very competitive to get into one of the world's top international law firms. But I would also say if you fail the first, even the second time, there are so many people I work with now who are successful corporate lawyers at one of the world's best law firms who started out with rejections from tons of law firms. All of the law firms they applied to have applied again to become a paralegal somewhere, have then been paralegals, have built up their experience, have applied again, maybe got rejected again, and have eventually broken through into law. You need to build up a really strong CV or list of things that you've done in life that show that you are exceptional, that make people want to hire you. If you get rejected the first time, look at your CV and think, what other experiences could I have to show I am exceptional? And then go and do those things. Constantly try to gain experiences that show that you will be an excellent lawyer and then just be persistent.
Next and related question is what's my single best piece of advice for getting a training contract or getting into law? It is to build up experiences where you have genuine impact on the thing you are doing. If you are working stacking shelves at your local bookstore, come up with a better system to stack those shelves and be able to talk at length about it. If you are a member of your law society, join the committee and make change to improve diversity and inclusion. If you're interested in widening access to study law at university, create an Instagram page where you share tips about what law at university is really like. Do things where you have a genuine impact that you can talk about rather than just listing off all of the things that you kind of have done, like joining a law society. Like anyone can write that on their CV. Not anyone can say, I joined the law society and I made these changes with this result. And final question, what one piece of advice would I give to trainee lawyers trying to find their feet? And I think this piece of advice applies to literally anyone in any profession who's a junior. It's to spend longer than you think on the task and make it as good as possible. Do a piece of work, do it very carefully and to the best of your ability. And then at the end of it, spend an hour, maybe even two or three hours, making sure that your work is absolutely as good as it can possibly be. Even maybe take a little bit of time away from that piece of work if it's not super urgent, revisit it, come back, reread it, make sure that you are really happy that it's as good as it can be and there are no silly mistakes. As a junior, everyone does make mistakes, but I think it's really important to remember that first impressions have a disproportionate impact on what people think of us. So making a positive first impression is hugely important. That means when you first get given a piece of work by someone, do everything in your power to make that as good as it can possibly be. And that includes spending loads of time checking it, really thinking, have I thought about everything Everything here? Have I made sure all of the spelling and punctuation is perfect? Have I double checked all of the bits of detail that matter that I need to get right? I don't think that every piece of work has to be perfect, but if it's your first piece of work for someone, I think it really should be as close to perfect as you can get it. So yeah, this has been the Big Law q and I really hope you've enjoyed. Please do let me know down in the comments if you have any other questions and I will do my best to answer them or I'll note them down for a future Q&A video. If you've enjoyed this, please do give this video a thumbs up. It honestly massively helps the video get seen by more people. And I really look forward to speaking again very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching.